the reason that I got involved with Dark Shadows as a publicist was because at that time, I was working specifically as a contact for magazines in New York. And there were a few daytime magazines just beginning then. There weren't many like there are now. And so they took an interest. And so I was working with them. But the teenage magazines, which were a new phenomenon then, there was one named Gloria Stavers that started a magazine called Sixteen. And Sixteen was located here. And the number one competitor was called Tiger Beat. They were in California. Those two magazines went bananas for Dark Shadows. I mean, they were putting the vampire Jonathan Fred on the cover of Sixteen magazine. Both of them, I've worked it out with both of them to have a monthly column so that there would be a story about Dark Shadows every month in those teenage magazines. It was the same with the couple of magazines that were then, there was only one monthly magazine covering soaps at that time. Uh, we'd usually get it to get uh, Shadows in there too every month. But the phenomenon was the teen market because it was on late in the afternoon, kids would watch it after school. We started getting a college crowd as well. The college crowd that had fallen in love with Batman went for Dark Shadows because they'd see it in the afternoon after classes were through. And the, there again, the, it was a pleasure bringing the press to that set, to the studio where we shot Shadows because they had all watched and wondered where the crypts were and where is the coffin really there and where is the graveyard and how is Curtis doing all this stuff. So that show was just sheer fun to work on. Uh, there wasn't any, anything grim and there was nothing dragging about it. You had a cast that would go from the grand great days of Hollywood with Joan Bennett who'd been a, you know, a, a star there in the Gable world to new young New York actors doing their first things. David Selby when nobody had heard of him yet at that time. Kate Jackson was new to town then. I had just, I met her there. She'd, she'd been, you know, she'd worked as I recall as an usherette at, at Radio City when she first got here. But Dan and his casting people were finding people like that. John Carlin, long before Cagney and Lacey was playing the weird little guy on Dark Shadows. But you could do that in New York. Uh, you had all these wondrous, fine stage actors here who were delighted to have the job and delighted to have a job that was a goof that they could have fun with. The degree to which that cast bonded, I guess, shows because I know that there are reunions and you know, personal appearances made all the time in this country. So that's, what, 30 years ago? Uh, it was a special experience working in Dark Shadows. I, uh, a guy named Les Schechter was the primary publicist on that. And I loved being able to work with Les on that show because it just wasn't like anything else in New York. It, in New York City at that time, Dark Shadows was series television. That's all there was. So t to be allowed to work on it was a privilege. It was fun. Another of the brightest and most beautiful young faces in there was Nancy Barrett. And that became a blast when I walked onto the set because I had known Nancy a few years before that. Uh, when she was, she had just come into town, she was an out of work actor, she was married to a, a friend of mine, which is how we met, and she just had been a delight and a wondrous fine person. So it was great fun to be with Nancy. There was an actress, unfortunately dead, died way too young, in Virginia Vestoff, who also I'd known since she was a teenager doing summer stock around here, coming out of musicals. She was a brilliant musical actress. Um, and Virginia was in there, but that's the way the casting went on that show. You just, it wasn't so much as running into people that you knew and had heard of from other things, no. Dan and his casting folks, they found them before anybody had heard of them, when they were the new kids. Laura Parker, I remember this. It was just great times. Catherine Lee Scott, who was a joy to work with. They don't come any better than Katie. But the whole unit was like that. Louis Edmonds was another, Louis was one of those guys who was a, Mr. Off-Broadway and brought him in. Every serious actor in New York knew Louis Edmonds because if, if you wanted a distinguished Englishman, you got Louis. Uh, he was just not the sort of guy that you would expect to be called Louis. Um, he, uh, and he came into this and saw what it wasn't. He and, and John Bennett made a great team because they both had a certain elegance about them. 
Then Jonathan Frid came in, and Jonathan was a whole, uh, he was a Shakespearean actor out of Canada. Um, David Selby, who, when Dan first introduced him, I remember, it seems to me he was on the show for a week or two before he ever said a word. I think, wasn't that David? Just those amazing cheekbones and lit for that face. He was getting fan mail before he ever opened his mouth. The teen magazines immediately went crazy for David. But every new character that came into there was potential instant star. Um, and it, for me, because I'd spent so much time working also in, in the New York theater in one capacity or another, it was just a play. It was, it, it was like walking backstage at a New York theater when you went to the set of, it was like going to the Tony Awards or for uh, when you go, went over to Dark Shadows because of the quality of the people he was casting in those shows.